Hey everybody! That was for that big monkey man. Wait, big ass monkey? Really big monkey. That's <clears throat> really big monkey. So we got you. Now I got this idea for really big monkey. Actually, I had the idea 15, 20 years ago, but I never made a video. I never made it, so it's been sitting on the shelf. Now you can put a frog gigger on it. I'm not sure I'm in the video, but uh, you can put different attachments on it. But this is what Julia used to tap it out. Right there, see. I might link this, I might not, but I've been painting so I'm hands are kind of green. But that's that's it. Hello rock fans. <laughs> this here's Bob. <laughs> and that is David Pearson with Really Big Monkey who gave me the idea of coming up. Well first let me tell you. He I saw his video and he was um, tromping through the woods some brush with a hoe. Like he cut off the end of a hoe and just had that metal hook and he was whacking through the brush and that's when I remembered that I had made this spear about 15 maybe 20 years ago long oh, time ago yeah. but I had the idea of being able to change out the parts and you could uh, you could change um, unscrew this just a broom handle see it's just a broom handle and uh, now I had a broom. I made a video earlier. I'll, I'll plug it in. You'll see it. But you take and you can buy this on eBay. Uh, I'll probably link it in the video. And uh, well, here I'll show you on this one. You just drill out. Get the right size drill bit. Drill it out. And then you. It's basically a tap. And then you tap and thread this. And it's for broom handle, uh, for tapping broom handles. And then you screw, you can screw your broom handle in it. And I thought, well, why not do that? You can have a, a spear. You can have a, a frog gigger. You can have a, a ball, a club, a hook, a reel for fishing. I don't know. You can come up with your own ideas. But I wanted, I thought it'd be a good idea. To have a spear and uh, you could also this is a, a, a coupling you know and you could have the coupling screws in on both ends in the center of your stick or staff or stick you know cut this and put this in there as a coupling and then you could it will break down for camping bushcrafting bugging out whatever <laughs> and uh you could even do two you know break it down into three pieces if you want um you could probably screw on a machete you know or a tomahawk type of thing like this this is a railroad spike i got into blacksmithing 
probably from watching Tom Brown, uh, reading his books and getting out in the woods and trying stuff, and then that's when I picked up blacksmithing. I made this probably 25 years ago, and I threw it into a tree, and it threw perfect, and it stuck in the tree, but I didn't know how to heat treat it properly. I didn't, you know, temper it back. We put it in the oven at 400 degrees for an hour or so, and it, and it brings back the temper. So I just heated it red hot and quenched it. Of course, it's brittle as glass at that point. So I broke the tip off, and I don't know if you can see that. And it, it was nice at one time, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's got the little hand groovy things for, now I didn't gimp it up in here, but it's got a, a curve for your thumb to go in there. But that's what got me started probably in bushcrafting and wilderness survival was Tom Brown reading up in him and stalking wolf that he learned from. <clears throat> um, this is just, just a boker pocket knife that I like the quick opening. Just little things I like carving out for the fingers. See it goes this way. See I, I you probably can't that's probably not picking up on TV, but I like I like to shape things to my fingers. Um, like this handle. This is a edger blade. And um, I thought since you grab it, you only got room for three fingers, what do you do with this third finger? So that's what that little dude right there is for. You stick your little pinky finger right there. That fits right there. So then you can hold it. Like that's a, for skinning. A lot of times when you're skinning a deer, you got your hand up in the cavity, the body. <clears throat> you got to cut up into that esophagus. Or, um, so it's got a... <clears throat> It's kind of a gut hook, but it's more for peeling the skin. You you start you, you make a little cut, and then you oh you just peel the skin, so you're not cutting into the the um, body itself. You're just skinning it, and then of course you skin from there. That's a little design. Of course, you know what this is push dagger with a that metal point sticks out right there. Uh, fair serum rod. I painted that black just to protect it. And some exotic wood there I got. Um, <clears throat> this is another knife I made. I haven't finished the um, the sheath yet. I gotta stain it, see it's all. But I sewed it and left a, a weep weep hole, a drain hole for it right there. Um, but then I, I got that little finger notch right there, but I got an extra one here for scraping the rod, right, right like that, you know, or you can turn it over and do it like that, but that's what, yeah. and also I thought you should use a funnel, take a funnel of paper or a bark or something, or maybe grass, and make a funnel down into your tender and then you scrape this in the funnel and all the sparks go down and hit one spot instead of flying all over. I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, this machete, I think, uh, what was the guy's name? Chris? Chris with, uh, I forgot. He, he, he shows off knives a lot, uh, and he showed this one, and I copied it. Now, I didn't intend to put this gut hook right here, but I messed up. And when I was cutting this out on the uh, with my angle grinder, I cut in too deep right here, and I was like, crap. Well, a good artist hides his mistakes, so what I did is I just uh, cut that back a little bit and put a... Um, you know, this is this is going to be more like um, a Scandi grind, and this is going to be more of a chisel grind here. Um, if, if I'd have thought, I probably would have done a one-sided grind, <coughs> like Tom Brown's is. I think his is a one-sided grind back here, and then um, 
I might still do some jumping back here. I got a little groove here for your finger too, but I don't know about that. And I got I want to put some more jumping here. And up here I got a little saw. I don't know if you can see that. That saw there. But I just like the kukri uh, ish. And that other one, I always forget the name of that other machete. It's, it's just plain straight, kind of squared off. But it's a cross between the two. And I can't even remember who makes this, this uh, machete. But I hope, I've got high hopes for this. It's um, 01 Tool Steel is what this is. And uh, this is a leaf spring steel. OCLS, Old Chevy Leaf Spring. <laughs> and this is going to be a cane sword. I made this probably 20 years ago too and I hadn't hadn't finished it. I learned from uh, Dave Hesser, he was a he is a bladesmith, knife maker. Uh, I think he's doing um, sculpture, huge, big giant sculptures that they um, they've made stuff for Cher and everything. And that's a night owl um, artist, super good artist. I know David always talks about having a secondary pocket on his knife. I've done this for 20 plus years and I got it from the samurai. Did it when they would, um, on their wakazashi, the short sword, they'd have an extra pocket for a utility knife, you know, for cleaning your fingernails out and stuff. But this is um, a bandsaw blade and um, it, this sucker's sharp. Let me find something to cut. I cut one of my business cards, but uh, see, it, it's sharp. <laughs> and then, uh, okay, so you can see this is sharp. This is uh, another piece of the bandsaw blade. It, now I left the um, teeth on this one, and I sharpened out this end. And then you can put a handle on it, or I can put a handle on it later. This end's sharp, so you can cut. You know, you can saw with this too. And uh, so that's what that extra little, that little pocket right there, see, that's, that's what that little pocket is for. And then this is my, one of my favorite <coughs> railroad spike knives. <coughs> I'd like to make a video maybe of making this, I'm sure there's plenty people have shown this. The pineapple figure is where you uh, take a cold chisel and you go down all four sides and you twist it and then you chisel down all four sides and untwist it and it makes a pineapple. Of course HC is supposed to be high carbon. Uh, if it says HC on the end it's high carbon. And this is uh, one of my favorite railroad spike knives. I made another one, I'm, I'm not sure where that one is, where I took the guillotine and uh, pinched off, made a ball here, and it's so, so you can twirl it. Now, a lot of people think, well, you're just twirling it, you're not doing anything, that's, that's just playing around, but no, there's a purpose in it. Like, like if you stab and miss, you come back around and cut both sides, right, like that. So that, that twirling is... Uh, it's jujitsu. It's uh, from the Nagi family, the Nagi group. So. That's learned from Don Anjay. <laughs> he, he was uh, quite the martial artist. That, that's what that is. So a punch. 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 But anyway, that's a, a few of my knives that I can show and tell. But yeah, I just wanted to, um, the main thing I wanted to show was, was this. And, uh, this is a Yari, Japanese Samurai Spear. It's a little bent. <laughs> I didn't get it perfectly straight, so it's more of a demonstration of, of what you could do with a broomstick. 
and a die. Tap and die. Tap. Tap is when you do hollow it out. Mm -hmm. The female part, and then die is now, 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 male, female. <laughs> I guess it's however you want to identify it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Right? There's only two. Well, that doesn't go in there. This goes in there. And then I, uh, I just wet fit this one. I just, it, so, it, yeah, it fits in there really good. I'll probably stain it or something. But, uh, yeah. That's it. So, if you haven't checked out, I can't start with the names, but David Pearson, a really big monkey, is. He's got a lot of good tips. I enjoy watching his videos. I just wanted to share that with you. And uh, peace out.